Alex, a flying visit back to Dubai, just having a look around. Does it remind you of the ILT20 and get the juices flowing a little bit and thinking about season two? Yeah, it does. So I love coming to the UAE and I love my first season with the Vipers. Um, tournament was a great success. We had a successful campaign. Obviously, we would have liked to have gone one more, but um, you know, really happy with, with how it went. And it's yeah, getting me excited to coming back here in January. Well, it's just looking at your, your schedule. It, it, uh, it really does um, make your face drop. It's quite incredible, really. You, you, you've been with the Trent Rockets in the 100. Prior to that, you were in Canada for the, the T20 there. You played in the Surrey Jaguars, who lost in the final. You were in the T20 Blast, losing in the quarter-final to, to, to Somerset before that. You were in the PSL. Um, it, it's actually a lot of pressure. Uh, I, I know people might think that uh, you know, now you've given away uh, red ball cricket. Now, all of a sudden, you're, you're going from team to team and you're expected to perform, aren't you? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a whirlwind lifestyle, but it's a really enjoyable one. Um, I think the busyness of that schedule is you know, some of the reason why I gave up Red Bull cricket, just with all the tournaments there are around the world in the winter and, and, and the busy schedule in the summer, it becomes, you know, you have, to you have to manage your schedule and make sure you're always fresh and fit and ready to go. But yeah, as you just said, that's a really hectic schedule. Um, but really, I'm really looking forward to it. The winter's always amazing, getting to come over here and Australia and um, yeah, I'm very privileged to be in the position I'll be in to get to be an overseas player in uh, the different teams in different countries. Um, it's a great lifestyle and you can learn a, a lot about cricket and yourself. Do you relish that pressure then? Because it is pressure as the overseas player. You're, you're expected to come in and perform and lead the line with. Really. Yeah, it's, it's something I've always enjoyed is the, is the big games, you know, the big crowds and, and the pressure that comes along with it. Um, you know, as the overseas player, you, you're, on the, you're on the bigger contracts, you're expected to come over and, and lead and perform. So, and that's something I've always enjoyed and something you know, I'm going to continue to enjoy for the rest of my career. What about your time leading into ILT20 now? What does that look like? Uh, so I'm off to the Caribbean um, to play in the CPL. Uh, and after that, I'll probably have maybe four to five weeks off just to recharge and, and uh, you know, get the fitness levels back up and just to make sure I'm fresh for another, as you said, another busy sort of four to five months. Um, there's um, talks of maybe a, a T20 tournament happening in the, in the Bahamas in November. Um, and then hopefully T10, big bash, fingers crossed. Um, a lot of it's unknown at the moment because of the drafts and, and all that stuff hasn't happened yet. But you know, if it, if it goes to plan, then there's T10, big bash, um, straight here to the IL, um, potentially PSL. So it's a really busy sort of four to five months coming off, but one I'm looking forward to. Now, the last time we spoke, uh, or since the last time we spoke, you retired from international cricket, you made that, uh, that announcement. Wouldn't it be fair to say that's a weight off your shoulders because it, it seemed that people were constantly asking you, are you going to come back? Are you going to come back? Is it a decision you're comfortable with and, 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 and happy that you, you've made public? Yeah, it's, it's a decision I'm comfortable with. I've, I've probably known deep down for quite a while that was where I was at. Um, and it's, yeah, it's something you know, I'm, I'm proud to have played that many games for my country, 156 games. Hugely proud to have done that. Um, but just with you know, all these franchise things now and, and without the luxury of a central contract from England, it, just, it becomes so tough to, to, to weigh it all, um, to weigh all the bilateral series along with the missing out on the franchise stuff. It becomes a tough one financially. So I just felt you, you feel like it's a strange thing that missing a bilateral series to go and play in a franchise thing. It didn't sit very well with me. So I just felt comfortable making the decision just to step away from international cricket. With my last game being a World Cup final, it's as good as it gets. Let's reflect back on the first season of ILT20. You were part of the Desert Vipers side that were runners up in the tournament. How did you find the whole experience? Loved it. Um, absolutely loved it. It was obviously a brand new tournament, so there was a lot of unknowns, but you know, the franchise were brilliant. We had a we had a brilliant hotel, a great setup um, down in Jebel Ali. Um, uh, we recruited really well, the players were outstanding, but also the backroom staff, uh, everyone everyone got along really well and there's a real sort of family feel to, to the franchise, which is you know, a nice feeling when you're away from home and in hotels. So, um, you know, the first tournament was a huge success, except the result of the final, but um, you know, we, I thought we gelled really well as a team and, and, and performed well throughout the tournament. What do you think was the main factor in the side not quite getting across the line? I think they. I think on the day they were just a better side. We had some good tussles with them um, in the group stages, but I think on the day it's all about who handles the pressure the most and, and who can deliver. Um, you know when it matters. And unfortunately, you know there's 22 professional cricketers out there who are all exceptional players, and you know they they just got it done on the day. Unfortunately, your own form in the tournament. You were obviously the leading run score. You scored the first ever hundred in the ILT20. You got a 99 as well. But I'm guessing. 
you'll reflect as well that the second half of the tournament was frustrating from your perspective. You, you couldn't quite replicate that early form. Why do you think that was? And, and is that something you can address for season two? Uh, it's just it's T20 cricket in a way. Like it's so, as an opener, you expected to go out and you know take the game on. It's often the best time to bat in the first six overs, and sometimes the ball can swing and seam, and you know you, you can have one with your name on sometimes. So I, I don't think I did anything different. My prep was still the same. Just it was just the way the way T20 goes sometimes. Um, I think the, the pitches were definitely a little bit better at the start of the tournament. So I cashed in then, I think. But you know now I've. You know, I've probably learned and I've a little bit more of experience of what the pitch is going to be like at the back end, so I think that will set me in good stead next year um, on, when it comes to consistency. I was going to ask you actually, what, what were your main learnings from season one in terms of condition, in terms of uh, the opposition? What, what, what did you take away from the tournament? Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't played a huge amount of cricket in the UAE actually before this tournament, only a handful of games, a handful of international games. And, I think maybe one or two in the PSL, so it's kind of uncharted territory for me. But I think you know the ball, the ball swung and seemed a fair bit actually. So I think as an opener, maybe you can give yourself a little bit more time, more time than what you would in, in different comps, just to, to get used to that swing and maybe cash in a bit later on in the innings. Um, so I think that's probably something I'll maybe look to do a bit more next year, is just be a bit more wary of the first sort of ten to twenty balls. Let's talk now about the new signings for the Desert Vipers for season two. We'll talk about each one individually, Shahid Shah, Reedy. Michael Jones, Baz Delader, Adam Hose. Let's talk about Shaheen first of all. Um, you, you, you've got an interesting relationship with him because, of course, um, he got you out in the, in the in the World Cup final, the G20 World Cup final. But of course, you played extensively with him. You played uh, for Nottinghamshire in the in the T20 Blast this season. Um, heck of a bowl. Yeah, you could, you could put the case for He's probably the best seam bowler in the world, actually. Certainly the best new ball bowler. Um, swings at an extreme pace with, from a six-foot-six six frame. Uh, left arm around the wicket. It's a, it's a right-hander's nightmare. So I'm just lucky that he's on our team, I think, this year. I've, I've had some good um, good jousts with him over the years in the PSL and international cricket. And you know, he's, he's one of the finest operators. So I think that's an unbelievable recruit from us, especially with the swinging conditions we'll probably have in the UAE. So um, yeah, I think that one's as good as it gets. Shadav Khan, someone I think you, you've come across in the PSL, terrific wrist spinner, dangerous batter, wonderful fielder, good leader as well, like Shaheen I guess as well, those two do have a great leadership experience, Shadav looks a, a pretty decent signing as well doesn't he? Yeah, he's, I think he's a complete cricketer to be honest, he's excellent in the field, obviously a very good leg spinner, a lot of mystery to his leg spin and, and can also what, you know, whack sixes in the middle to lower order, sometimes at the top order in PSL. So, um, he's a wonderful utility player and, and one of the best all rounders in the world. So, yeah, again, that's it's a top class recruit. Um, I'm sure he'll shine for us. Azam Khan, someone the Vipers looked to get in season one, it wasn't possible to get Pakistan players there. He's now on board. What a record that man's got. I think mean, you've got experience in playing with him in, in PSL as well, but yeah. he brutalizes bowling, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's one of the best hitters of a cricket ball I've seen. Um, the, bat, the bat looks so small in his hands. He's just a big, big, strong unit and he can hit it for miles. Um, plays spin and seam very well and obviously a wicket keeper as well. So yeah, I, I played with him in the, in the latest edition of PSL um, and he was so good. Um, clears the ropes for fun. So another dangerous player in the middle order. Adam Hose, um, playing his county cricket at Worcestershire at the moment and has been playing in the 100 for the Northern Superchargers. He played in the inaugural edition of ILT20 for Charger, Charger Warriors. Good recruit? Yeah, I think so. I've played against him a handful of times and he always seems to seems to score runs. I think he got 100 against us at Trent Bridge uh, maybe last year and he just hit it to all parts. Uh, very dangerous player, can score all around the wicket um, and good in the field as well. So again, another another good middle order signing. That's the later. He's made headlines around the world, of course, by helping the Netherlands to get through to uh, helping the Netherlands to get through to uh, the Cricket World Cup in India. A sensational performance there. He's playing his candy cricket in uh, in Durham. Um, terrific all-rounder. Also, he was in the uh, IRT20 last season uh, at the uh, MI Emirates. and didn't really get a look in there. He looks an exciting player. He does, yeah. Good young talent, um, as you said, an all-rounder, and in T20. You know, they're gold dust, someone who can bowl good pace, good change-ups and also whack it, sort of in the middle to lower order. I think he's a very dangerous cricketer. So, yeah, again, another another top-notch signing. And Michael Jones, he's played um, one-day internationals and T20s for um, Scotland. He had 
a good record in the T20 Blast for Durham this season. Another, uh, another good signing, a player who's on his way up. Definitely, yeah, and I think that's what you want when you're building franchises is young guys who have, you know, where, where um, you know, the, the sky's their limit. Um, he, had a good, he had a great season this year and I'm sure we'll see even more of it this, this winter. And this being the only franchise to sign Pakistan players, give the Vipers some sort of competitive advantage, do you think, in the season two? I think the, the three we've signed definitely gives us an advantage. I think three of the, three of the best um, three of the best T20 players in the world right now and already added to the ranks of what we had last year where we made the final. I think it looks a really dangerous squad. What about the other sides? They've all strengthened. Every every team has announced big names coming in. Um, star names. Anyone stand out for you? Or are you, uh, I seem to remember last year, you were very much focused on what you do and what the Vikings do. What do you consider the other teams? I think I've still got that mentality. I think you start, you start looking and prepping for other teams once the tournament starts, that's when you start going into all the analysis of what, you know, what teams have signed and what bowlers and batters they've got. So, um, I think there's a good contingent of Aussies who are looking to come over, so that'll, be, that'll boost the competition for sure. Um, but I'll worry, I think I'll worry more about the opposition once we have a meeting before the game. How do you feel about the Desert Vikings squad now with the additions that, uh, that have come in? Obviously some players have gone the other way and, uh, and left the franchise as well, but feel the side stronger than it was in season one? I think so for sure, which takes some doing. I think we, I thought we had an unbelievable squad last year, but I think we've kept some key players and also recruited extremely well. So yeah, I think us, you know, players, coaches and the fans can be really excited for the season. Now Alex, what about the, the Desert Vipers commitment to become carbon neutral as soon as possible? It, it, it's something the franchise have been very keen on. I'm sure you remember in season one, um, 1.5 degree sport with the electric scooters that, that you guys were, were buzzing around on. But the franchise is now at Lords last month and announced their commitment to become a better, more ethical team from a climate perspective. What's it like to be involved in a franchise that's come out and publicly gone down that path? It's good, it's exciting as well. I think you know, everyone can see now the world's changing, you know, the scientists are saying about climate change. I think it's really really good as a franchise that we're getting involved in that and trying to make the world a better place and hopefully you know, people around the world can get on board with that too. And let's reflect on uh, the season to come and the season that's passed. Are you confident the squad can go one better than, uh, than last season? Definitely, yeah, even more so than last year. I was excited when you know, coming to the tournament, uh, looking at the squad we had last year, but with these recruits and, and, the, and the re-signings we made this year, I, I for sure think we can go one better. It's really exciting. Come support the Desert Vipers for season two of the DP World IL T20. <laughs> Fangs out.